Now you've been in the jewelry business for a long time. A new business I've been seeing you enter into, and I don't know how long you have been, so let me know how long you've been in it, is the uh, medical marijuana business. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, you know, as uh, weed is become, as marijuana has become more and more legal, and uh, as it's become more and more decriminalized, we can be more open about what we've been doing or what we've been wanting to do. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, you know, I'm just getting my little, putting my little stake in that green rush, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm 420 friendly. Me being from the Switch House, of course, you know, we have a history of, uh, you know, being uh, around that type of environment, man, and doing them type of things, man. But it's just something that, you know, as, as the, uh, the marijuana industry is, you know what I'm saying, being more legal and as it's gravitating more and more to our Texas, man, you know, I'm trying to just, you know, do my little part, represent for my people down here, you know what I'm saying, do my thing. I also, man, I, I just always been an entrepreneur and um, sometimes you get turned on to different hustles that are just opportunities, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes there are things that you've always wanted or dreamed to be a part of. And this is one of them things, you know, this is one of them things where it's a little bit of combination of both. I always wanted to have one, any, anything to do with marijuana. I always, I've I had dreams. I've been a smoker for a long time. So I've had, you know, tons of ideas for different accessories or weed products that could make rolling up easier or different type of products that'll make the, uh, you know, the, the, what you're smoking a little bit better, make it easier to smoke, it's just different things. So I'm just trying to do lots of different different things involved in the, uh, the marijuana industry. One is, uh, of course, um, uh, clothing. That's something I've been hustling for a long time, you know, with expensive tastes and famous stars and straps, with Algiers, with all the different clothing brands I was down with for, for a long time. Some of them we still doing. I got a lot of clothing brands that I'm still pushing right now. This is just happened to be one Satellite Supply, it's a, a, a brand that's dedicated specifically to weed. Satellite OG is a strain of, of, of marijuana that my homeboys started, a couple of my homeboys in the, uh, in the San Fernando Valley in LA. Uh, he's some Sherman Oaks, man, something they started a, a while back, man, about, you know, over 10 years, almost 15 years now, man, or almost around, uh, you know, 2000, 2001, right up around there, man. So, you know, like 15, 16 years, something like that, man, is when they started doing the uh, Satellite OG. And at the time, it didn't really have a name to it. It just was, you know what I'm saying, a, a good-ass, old bomb-ass OG they had. And, uh, man, I said in a song, I think in Drive Slow, I said, uh, uh, break them off. One of them songs, I said something about I'm high as a satellite. And then my boy just took that and said, man, you know, we need to call this some Satellite OG because this shit going to get you high as a satellite. And it just it kind of stuck. And we just, you know, it just was something that we was pushing in the streets for a while and something that, we were smoking. It's like a VIP strain. It's not a, uh, it's not a strain. It's a mainstream strain that you're gonna be able to go to any shop and just get it. It's select shops you can get it out of, but it's mostly like a, whether it's the streets or the shops, man. It's a VIP strain. So only you know certain celebrities is gonna be smoking it. Not every celebrity gonna be smoking. Only certain celebrities that we fuck with, you know, are the ones that's gonna be really smoking it. Or uh, you know, same with the shops. Not every shop gonna have satellite OG. But the ones we fuck with gonna have it, man. You know what I'm saying? Not every street hustler gonna have it. Every trapper, ain't, every trap ain't gonna have some satellite. They might just have some regular Kush. Not regular like some Reggie Kush, but just some regular OG Kush, whatever some OG. They're not gonna have no satellite. The only select few gonna have that satellite OG. So there's the, the, the clothing and accessories, and there's also the strain of OG. Now there's more to it than that, too. Trippy Stick is one of the uh, first portable vaporizers that they came out with. Um, a while back, I did a collab with Trippy Sticks in the past. Trippy Stick also had collabs with, you know, Devin the Dude, Styles P, uh, you know, Two Chains, all different type of uh, artists, man. A, a lot of uh, elite rap stoners, man. You know, uh, Burner did a collab with them. And, you know, several other DJs, and just people all across the board did collabs with uh, Trippy Stick. I, of course, did one in the past, but now Trippy Stick, Trippy Stick has these new uh, these new vaporizers. They like an oven. We call them the ovens. It's like a little box. You just it's portable though, so you know we. We put out, we put like a half a gram in there. You can take it to the basketball game. You can take it to, you know, we be in the back. I mean, I ain't trying to tell on myself. If you see me at the Toyota Center, man, security don't come fuck with me. But you know, we didn't, we be in there, so we be in there smoking our trippy sticks out the oven, man. Hot boxing that oven, man, doing our thing, man. Because when you when you blow it out that trippy stick, it smell like burnt popcorn. You don't you don't get all the you don't get you don't get none of the cigar smell or none of that, and you don't even really get the uh, the strong marijuana smell into the air because it's being baked. You put it in there and it. It bake like an oven. It ain't like the. It, it's, it's not like a vaporizer. This is the new edition where it's not like the vaporizer. This is just straight.
straight raw flour, straight tree, not wax or oil, straight tree. You just put the straight tree in there, you let it bake, it cook like you cook, you like you cooking something up in the oven. You let it cook for like a minute, two minutes, you know what I'm saying? And then when it's done cooking, you inhale, exhale, and enjoy. And that's what we about, baby. We be at the fights, any of the boxing matches, the UFC fights, MMA fights, we be there with our tripping stick, blowing big at the Texans game, everywhere we be there with the tripping stick, man, in the public, man, doing our thing, man. And, uh, you know, so that's just another form of way we smoke, you know what I'm saying, that tripping stick. Also, there's uh, gold leaf. Gold leaf is another uh, another thing, you know, me, I'm big on smoking. I don't really smoke too many papers, man. I'm, being from the Swiss house, I always was more of a cigar type of person, man, you know what I'm saying? So we, Swissers is something we smoked in, in Houston and in Texas for years. So, you know, that's what we kind of grew up on. But also, man, backwards, I smoked a lot of backwards coming up, man. My, my my partner, rest in peace, man. Uh, my boy Omar, man. He's he always was a big backwoods smoker, man. So he always had me on backwoods, and this was back in '98. You know what I'm saying? We were smoking backwoods, man. I didn't even know what the fuck he was doing. How the fuck you rolling it up? And, you know, you don't roll it up like you roll a switcher. You don't split it down the middle. You got to unwrap it and then wrap it back up. But you know what I'm saying? So you know that smoking them 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 switchers, them backwoods, and then on to the, just the raw fonta leaves, man. My homeboy, my other Jamaican partner, put me on to the raw fonta leaf. He would just order them raw, man. He would just order them by the pound, man. Get pounds of the raw fonta leaf, and he would just keep it in his jar. And whenever you want to roll, he just tear it off and roll up, man. Roll up the grubber. And that's what he said. He roll up the grubber. And uh, you know what I'm saying? So the, the gold leaf, this is a new brand we've been fucking with, man. This is a, you know, it's a, a form of raw fonta leaf, man. There's no pesticides on it, man. And I found this in a smoke shop, man. I went into a smoke shop. I asked for a fonta leaf or a backwood or any of that. They didn't have none of that. This is the only thing he had. So I said, let me see what you got with you. And I seen it in the pack like that. I said, man, how you gonna have a fonta leaf in that? Man, it's gonna be crusty. It's gonna be have holes in it. Ain't no way it's gonna be no good. And I opened that bad boy up, man. When you open that bad boy up, you take it out of there, man. It's like a, a fonta leaf like you ain't never smoked before. First of all, the size of it is gonna be something else, man. You can fit something serious in here. We got something we call a satellite slugger. A satellite slugger is 14 grams. It's a half an ounce up into one cone or into a, one of these gold leaves. Hold 14 up, grams is a satellite slugger. And this is, a, you know, when you, when you, this is, this come out of one pack of gold leaf. You know what I'm saying? You, and it, you, you look, you, I mean, I, I've never been able to do this with any other leaf or any other Fonta leaf company or any of that, man. So this is, man, it's fresh beyond compare, man. You know what I'm saying? And it's a, uh, it's, it's big like that. We don't always roll them 14 grams, you know what I'm saying? We cut them up or sometimes we might, you know, take this and, uh, you know, we'll tear it or, or I take it like this and just, just uh, roll it a little bit and then uh, just tear it and then we'll roll this and then bam, I got no. I just roll this up right here like this and have me a little, a little some fat to roll right here, you know what I'm saying? So this is how they come. We cut it up usually with scissors and just make little smaller portions with this, but this is how they come, man, a gold leaf. And uh, it's just something, man, ever since I, I smoked this, man, I've been in love with it. This is the only thing we've been smoking. Ever since, ever since I opened my first pack of these, my first gold leaf, when I was in the, uh, 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 the bay, after my first time I opened my first gold leaf, I ain't looked back yet. This is all we've been smoking, man. And uh, it's a brand I got down with, man. And, you know, like I said, it's something I enjoy to smoke. But at the same time, man, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a go-getter. And that's just how I was taught, man. What you love, the same thing you spend your money on is something you could be making money off of. So that's just how I do my stick, man. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're doing now. This is the Power Wall Edition. The gold leaf, they come in three different versions. The gold, silver, and the rose gold. Each leaf is a little bit different because they come from a different plant. See, this rose gold right here, it come from a rose wood. It's a rose wood leaf, man. It got all the information on the back. Or if you go to the website, you can check out the website, goldleaffonta.com, man. Or check us out on our Instagram, at goldleafs with an S at the end, goldleafs. You know what I'm saying? You get all the information what it's about, but man, no pesticides. There's no tobacco filling in it. There's no glue on it, none of that. It's always fresh. It's not crusty. Sometimes you get them packs, man. Them other brands, sometimes them packs, man, you get them packs. I'm not going to say no names, man, because I still support the other brands, too, so I'm not going to talk down on them, too, and I'm a, uh, I respect the game. I don't hate. So, you know what I'm saying? But some of them other brands, man, you open that pack up, that whole shit be crusty, got holes in it. You can't smoke not one out the whole pack, man. You know what I'm saying? But these, they always fresh, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why we've we been in love with them and we ain't look back, man. But, you know, it's all for my, all my leaf smokers out there. All my boys that roll them Fonta leaves up, man. It's, just, it's for you, man. You're going to love it, man. Try that gold leaf out, man. And you're going to really love it, man. So, you know, the marijuana industry is something that I've been, you know, I guess, you know, when I, ever since I wrapped up my first Swisher House tape, it was something I was destined for, you know what I'm saying? When 
when Michael Watson, Ron C, OG Ron C, let me rap with my the Switch House tapes, man. That was they were paving the way and they were lighting the path for me to walk down to be in this green rush, man. So I'm all in it now, man. We got all different type of products, you know, from grinders. We did a, a grinder collab with Santa Cruz Shredder, the world's best grinder out there. Uh, you know, we got all different type of collabs, different type of products. Man, you know what I'm saying? Only only product I'm not really down with right now yet is the, you know, the weed lean or the green lean out there. I don't do none of that. Every brand out there have been asking me to co-sign them or giving me free products. I salute the hustle and I salute to all the stoners out there who sip the green lean, but I'm a real lean smoker, not a green lean smoker. I sip the real lean. Not, and I don't mean green lean like the high tech green or the, uh, the sun green. I'm talking about the, man, I'm talking about the THC lean. That's what I'm talking about when I say green lean. So, shout out to them boys out there that is sipping that THC lean, but I'm not one of them. Shade up. If you ever see me sipping lean, it's because I'm it's sipping at uh, THC lean. It's because it's my company. That's the only company I'm ever going to sip on the THC lean. It's my company. But I ain't mad at nobody for getting their money out there for doing their thing. It's just it's not what I'm doing. You feel me? I'm in the green rush in a different area. You feel me? Now, how long have you been in the green rush for? Do you feel like you got in it too late? Do you feel like you got in it just in time? Uh, man, well, you know, like I said, man, me being a part of the Switcher House is like I was grandfathered into it. A little bit anyway it's just up to me to go out there and get it or for whatever I want to do if I want to open a dispensary up or start a strain or start a clothing line or start an accessories branding company or whatever else man I, it's, it's up to me to go out there and, and get it so in the years past I really wasn't uh, for all the products going all the way you know with expensive taste we would put a little bit of marijuana in our expensive taste shirts here and there a little bit or with the music you might see it here and there but you know back in, you know, even 10 years ago, man, it was illegal, you know, to another level, you know what I'm saying? So we, it wasn't necessarily always something we was just always deep into, me personally, as of what I was doing, because I didn't want to jeopardize all my other hustles and licks. For instance, I got a uh, liquor company. I don't want my liquor company getting shut down because I'm out here selling marijuana products. I got a jewelry store. I don't want my jewelry store getting shut down because they hear we selling marijuana products in other states or other things. I got several companies, several businesses. So you know what I'm saying? You got to be smart about how you do your thing, how you promote yourself. Now me personally, I've been a part of the Green Rush for a long time in products behind the scenes where I was giving my advice or giving my marketing or branding advice or where I think things should go, but I wasn't always stepping out there being a spokesman for the companies like I am now. Because nowadays, it's a different type of story. You can do whatever you want to. You can say all about it. It's legal now. It's legal everywhere now. And where it ain't legal is decriminalized. And in Texas, it still ain't there just quite yet. But, you know, it's, it's good enough that when the police pull you over, they'll tell you, and I know what you got, but, you know, it's about to be legal anyway, so I'm going to let you make it. I ain't going to waste your time and mine. I'll let you make it. They don't always do that. Sometimes you get your asshole that want to make a name for itself, you're going to take it to jail. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying it's, it's changed a lot over the years. But, you know, definitely um, I feel like I, I, it's, it's not too late, man, especially with what we got going on with me and Baby Bash. We got a, a, a whole uh, a, 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 a series of mixtapes. Uh, called Legalizers. It's really just a series of albums with, you know, mixtape albums, same shit, man. We uh, just original music on there, man. It's a weed smoking music, man. Legalizers. It's just all weed smoking music with our partners, our stoner homeboys, you know, and just stoner songs with us and our stoner partners, you know what I'm saying? And, and Baby Bash himself, too, he got a lot of products, too. He pushing, too, man. So we just, you know, using, using our notoriety for what we are, our celebrity, who we are, just coming together for a good cause, for spreading a, a positive awareness about the, uh, the medical marijuana industry and at the same time get in it, you know what I'm saying, and make some money too with our own accessories and shit, you know what I'm saying? Now, when do you think marijuana will be medically legalized throughout the whole United States? If you can predict the future, I mean, it's in several states now, there's, it's up for other states to decide, um, you know, when they pass new laws, um, but when do you think you foresee it being nationwide. Man, I got a daughter, man. My son, he about to be 10, my daughter eight, man. So, you know, I just say in 10 years, my daughter 18, uh, you know what I'm saying? Or, or when she, maybe when she 21, whatever the age is to, to get it legally. Uh, when she's old enough to get it legally, I think it's gonna be legal everywhere. 
when she's when she's 18, 21, when she's that age, I think it's going to be legal everywhere. Definitely in Texas and pretty much everywhere. There might be a few places that are still holding on to the old ways because they think if you smoke it, it's going to make you go rape somebody and turn into a serial killer. Um, you know, but then the same places too that will prescribe the shit out of some oxys and prescribe the shit out of some uh, some antipsychotic pills that have long term effects on you, and give you depression and all kind of other shit, man. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, it's funny, man. It, that's what the turn of the tide is, as the awareness of uh, the, uh, the the traditional medical industry it, it comes around to when you start seeing that these uh, these medications you've been taking that your doctors, trained specialists have been prescribing and giving to you to uh, to help you when you realize that they really have been hurting you all this time and you really been putting poison into your body uh, all this time man and when you realize that and you start to see the uh, the positive effects that marijuana has uh, and you start to think back at at some of the uh, 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 the misnotions that you might have been taught about weed or, or the the stereotypes and untruths the misfacts that were taught to you about weed and you start to realize that that shit was just a bunch of lies and made up bullshit and uh, and you start to see the truth and you you take that veil off your eyes and you see what the real medication is man that's when people are more for it man you know what i'm saying and at the same time man you know america all about that mighty dollar man so they're seeing all this money that's being made off the uh, marijuana industry. They're seeing all the money that could be going toward helping our uh, economy and our communities. And that's something they don't want to pass up, man. You know what I'm saying? Especially here in Texas, man, the statistic came out when they first legalized uh, recreational marijuana in Colorado, man, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the tourism, man, they said like 30 some 40% was from Texas, uh, the tourism that came from Texas to Colorado just to be a part of that recreational marijuana. And then you take that, and it don't correlate to all, necessarily all 30% of them people is all coming to smoke weed. But at the same time, they said 30, 30 to 40% of the people that came for the recreational marijuana specifically was from Texas. So that's what I'm saying, man. When they start seeing them numbers and you see how much money out of billions and and beans of dollars is being made off of marijuana and you take 30% of that and you think, damn man, 30% could have been, that could have been our money in Texas that we made for our economy, for our taxes, for our schools, and for our fire departments and shit building our communities up there, man. That's when people start saying, man, we need that shit down here too. We don't need our people spending their money to go elsewhere. We need that shit here. And that's what people everywhere are saying. They, they saying they don't want to see their people. It's just like Amsterdam. People don't want to see their people go to Amsterdam and smoke weed no more. That's why Amsterdam got tired of that shit. That's why they say, nah, y'all y'all foreigners ain't coming over here smoking no more. We can't even smoke in Amsterdam no more. We ain't got to go to Amsterdam no more. We got our own city. We got our own Amsterdam.